Live from JMT Studios, Gary Seisel and Adam Buckingham are the Two Jersey Kids. What is up, y'all? This is Two Jersey Kids. It is episode 38 of the video game podcast. That is Two Jersey Kids, because I've already mentioned the podcast name. I am here, your host, Adam Buckingham, the host of this car crash this evening, alongside my best friend, the best dick handler in the business, Gary Seisel. How you doing today, Gary? I am doing pretty good. I'm ready to be doing this thing again. It's been a little been a little bit since we've done... I don't know. It just feels like we haven't been doing a lot of two podcast weeks lately, so I'm kind of excited to be here. Yeah, I feel a little off right now for some odd reason. I think it was because my day started off all fucking wonky driving to work this morning. This is what's got me in, like, because whenever something fucks with your schedule, that's when, like, when you're in the regular routine of doing work, uh, when you become an adult and you're out in the working business, when something fucks with your teen, it fucks you up all day, and that's what happened to me. I was driving to work, and I got to a normal intersection, uh, waiting at a red light, and all of a sudden, my car, like, it's, it's just sitting in idle, uh, I'm just waiting for people to go in front of me, all of a sudden, it just stalls and dies. Just dies. Ugh. I'm like, what the fuck? The The light comes up for the battery, and I was like, okay, because lately it's been like when I sit in idle and I think I have the AC on, it like rumbles kind of, like little like little shakes or vibrates slightly. Okay. And it did that again, and this time it like cut it off. So it was like idle. And so there was nothing wrong with the battery because I turned the key, came right back on, completely fine, no check engine light, no check battery light, no nothing. I was like, okay. So then I ended up taking it to the Honda dealership, and of course, you know, you can't just get it checked for, like, you know, free just to make sure your safety's all right. No, they gotta, you gotta spend hundreds of dollars just for them to go through the diagnostics that takes four hours and, you know, they don't give you a rental car to go back to your work. No. I got to get somebody there to drive <laughs> me there. And then I have to get after the fact. It t- they don't call me. I have to call them specifically to finally get fucking answers if I can go back and get my car. F- they finally tell me that nothing is wrong and it's just like a uh, happenstance that during when you're s- – it was just a random occurrence while sitting idle when you have the AC on. Uh, sometimes this can happen with the RPMs of your car and it somehow shut off the battery and you kind of – kind of stalled out there and i was like okay so can i come pick up my car and i was like yeah and they were like oh well since there's nothing wrong we don't have to fix anything we'll reduce your fee i'm like great it's still over 50 bucks still not fucking fantastic for you quote unquote labor you just walked around the car see if anything was wrong and testing it <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness and then i had to go back get an uber and the Uber driver took like 12 minutes to finally get there because apparently there's no one around the area that drives Uber. So I had to wait 12, hours, 12 minutes to finally get Uber, pay eight bucks for them to drive me there. I get there, finally get the stuff, get, do all that bullshit. Oh, and another pet peeve of mine is why do Uber drivers feel the need, feel the need to talk to you? I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm an introverted person when it comes to people, interaction, especially people I don't know. So don't talk to me. If I put my headphones in, if I have two headphones in, don't talk to me. I'm listening to something. And that is my biggest pet peeve is when I have headphones in and I don't know you and you decide to start keep talking. Guess what? If you don't talk to me, you're going to get a five star rating. Okay. Okay. Whew. I'm better now. Uh, I don't know what else I could add to that and or what I could offer. That's actually on par with that. But, um, uh, yeah. wow. That, Bef- was, uh, that was interesting. Before I ask you what you've been up to, Gary, I'm going to just say <laughs> the, we are a video game podcast. I know we're four minutes in and I'm finally doing that, but I had to get that off my chest. I honestly feel better now after doing that. We are a video That's game good. podcast. We release every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, we are recording slightly earlier due to our schedules. Uh, so maybe everything that you would expect in our Friday episode is not quite there just because we don't have all the news because we're recording earlier and we can't see the future. Uh, but yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at 2JerseyKids. If you're a new listener, uh, if you listen to my rant, thanks. <laughs> I hope you stick to the end, the end of the podcast and hit that subscribe button. If you're a continued listener, again, we really appreciate you and we love you so much. Uh, please, you know, go rate us. It will help us greatly. Yeah. So, um, Gary. What have you been up to in the video game world, or just you in general? You in general, man. Um, I just want to get uh, to know well, Gary. Gary's well, video games. 
again, it's it's a lull period. I, I haven't been doing much uh, with video games. I mean, I've been playing like my Battlefield, my Be- my Destiny, kind of intermittently, but nothing too crazy because it's it's just again that, that dry period I'm going through again sucks. But um, today. You know, yeah, you're saying like you hate when things kind of interrupt your routine. I, I had to go get uh, graduation pictures today. I'm walking tomorrow. Yay! Me. Congratulations! Woo, Gary! Yeah, man, finally. Now, now off into the terrible, terrible, boring world. Uh, anyway, <laughs> not we were... if this podcast becomes huge. Well, in that case, that'd be fucking amazing. That'd be but bonkers. Well, over time, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. But I, uh, I had to go do. Uh, graduation pictures today and you know i I just i hate when i when you get up in the morning and and you just immediately had to go somewhere and you it's not necessarily something you want to do um so i had to go out and get graduation pictures and you know i'm I'm happy i'm happy to do them my mom was really uh really wanted to get them done she wanted them done a certain way and uh it was just you know one of those things where when your routine is broken everything else kind of gets all messed up kind of like how you know, I slept uh, two extra hours today. <laughs> I said, so yeah, right before this podcast recording, I set my alarm. Okay. For four 30, I wanted to take an hour nap. All of a sudden I wake up and it's six 30. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I frantically look at my phone and it's like, Adam's like, yeah, I'm ready to record. And it's like at six. I'm like, shit. So, you know, everything just gets all out of sorts. So yeah, that's my day so far. But anyway, uh, I'm, you know, just happy to be here and everything. And, Right, ready to do this. Ready to set the world on fire. Yeah, there's something about pictures that really are draining because you're just you just feel like a mannequin puppet where they're just trying to move you whichever way. Make sure you're dressed the right way so they can snap shots of you. And it's just kind of tiring after a while. You move here, move here, stand with this person, stand with that person. It's yeah, really, well, really tiring. On top, on top of that, I um. So my mom wanted me to do since I played hockey at Rutgers. Uh, she wanted me to. I guess like a lot of people that go to this place have like uh, like sports related graduation pictures as in addition to the more traditional one where you're in your cap and gown. So I had to dress up in basically my hockey equipment and take these pictures. So you might, can imagine how hot that is. <laughs> and it, it's oh my god! I was starting to get like a little wobbly at one point. I'm like, how did, long am I going to have to stay in this position? Did the did the oh. uh, building at least have some sort of AC, or is there just a bunch oh, of yeah. people in there that just the uh, body temperature raised the the heat level of the place no no it was um it was a nice place i mean it was only just it was only me in the building at the time i was the only person they were uh like working with so it wasn't like uh anything crowded or anything but you know just being in that full gear like that and, and not actually stepping into a nice cold <laughs> rink that's that's tough it's not easy yeah. that's <laughs> so. a that's a struggle sounds like a struggle you're having gary yeah first world problems right <laughs> well i personally after that rant i did i have been playing the surge some more uh you can check out our tuesday episode if you want uh where i go into my discussion my initial pre- impressions of the surge i uh lucky enough to get a preview or view copy and i did my impressions and uh on wednesday it should be out on wednesday uh my further deep deeper dive into my impressions with the surge i'll be writing a blog post corresponding to our past tuesday episode which if you didn't know we do have a website two jerseykids.com and we are trying now to keep up to date with it every tuesday episode we'll, we're going to try on wednesdays do post blogs going deeper into the topic itself or whatever we want to talk talk about in correspondence with uh th- what we talked about uh you had something gary yeah um actually was it tomorrow uh for everybody that's really excited about destiny they're doing a uh gameplay reveal of destiny 2 so i'll be writing about that as well on what i guess thursday or tomorrow or well thursday you guys are listening you're listening to this on it friday already so been, it's it kind of already been convenient yeah, yeah it's, it's already, already happened, happened so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah I hate these timelines. Yeah, so, whatever. So uh, the Gary's post will probably be a more uh, not normal post on Thursday. Mine will be uh, the more stereotypical one. Uh, I think me and Gary will plan on alternating or whenever we want to actually write. Um, so most of the time, look for twojerseykids.com. Check out our blog post on Wednesday. Um, and Gary's on the both blog posts should be up by now if you're listening to the podcast on Friday. So yay, or later on because. That's how time works. But, uh, yeah, I've been playing The Surge. It's been frustrating me at times just because, uh, I don't know, it just feels, especially the fact that the setting, it's sci-fi, and you're kind of, like, enclosed in this area, well, at least the the second level that I'm at. I beat my second boss, which was fantastic. Um, It feels like sometimes this game is not 
reliant. I'll I'll elaborate more, I think, in the blog post, but I just want to get my quick thoughts out there. I just feel like the game relies more on uh, these creatures hitting harder than your, like, body can take. Which, in I know in the Souls games, you do, it does, they do hit you hard, but it's not like they hit you and you drop, like, half your health or uh, all the way down. Where in this game, it just seems like, instead of, to uh, ratchet up the difficulty, instead of it being tactical and they hit someone hard, they just hit, like, every character hits, like, tanks. And every hit, you just drop down drastically. So I feel like that's how they added, made it a slightly more difficult in that range. Which is kind of frustrating because I know like you can F up, but sometimes the dodging system is not quite what I want. It's not as responsive, so when someone lunges at me and I press X, it doesn't seem like I jump back as quickly enough and I always get hit. It seems like it's just not as responsive as I would like. And the fact that some of these characters or some of these enemies hit so hard, uh, it drops me down quick. They hit hard. Like the speedy, uh, you'll see in the second level, there's these speedy guys with uh, twin rigged um, machines. So they basically like dual wielding fists, um, kind of stabby things. So they like jump at you, they hit you hard at first, drop my health all the way down like to a quarter or like half. And then they do these, like, so I'm trying to get out of the way. And if I don't get, if I'm like cornered too quickly, they do these rapid punches, which it, like three punches, then I'm dead. So it's just like, it seems like it's. Not nearly as, I don't know, it just seems like they, the, the, it, they I don't want to say that to nerf like the, the level of damage you take, but I mean, I feel like if they slightly reduced it, it would make it more conducive to what I feel like this game should be, instead of making it just hard because you can't take too, too many hits or you're down. Isn't it frustrating? Um, I don't know if it's the case with this, but isn't it frustrating when you feel like the game companies don't really test out their combat? Like, I mean, I, I know I, I keep going back to Destiny over and over again, I feel like, in all these podcasts, but, like, with Destiny, you, you can kind of get an idea that Bungie never, ever played their actual their actual video game, because Damn. a lot of stuff... You know, it's so true, though. I mean, ask anybody that plays. I mean, the the game, the balances and the nerfs they've added in over time, you can just tell they never played the game, because they would never allow the stuff... To ha- like, the stuff that happens in the game right now, they would never allow to happen if they had people in their development team playing the game. Just would never happen. And it's like what you're saying with the Surge, where you're taking, like, absurd amounts of damage like that. You can just kind of tell they never really tested out certain parts. Now, I'm not saying... It, I mean, you know, it might not be exactly the case with that yeah. game, but... And I, here's the thing. that I would accept that if uh, they they hit hard, but the thing is your health doesn't correspond to the uptick in damage that you receive. So in in the Souls games, most of the time you can make sure you up your health. So if you want to do like Stanima, it'll just go up. Or if you want to do Strike, your health will go up with that. Or you want to specifically do like in Neo, it's like Heart or something like that. And your HP goes up specifically a corresponding to that. Whereas this, most of the time the health that it will... Uh, benefit you are like implants and you can only have eight to the max i believe right now from what i can see um which sort of somewhat like if you choose one implant it will progress with your core level but unfortunately you don't have enough slots for everything that you want to progress with your core level so you don't have the stamina that progresses with your health you have to kind of choose which one because some some of the other ones uh, the hot swaps or the injectables are actually more beneficial than that so it doesn't seem like your health uh, when you upgrade, doesn't correspond to the amount they're hitting you, if that makes any sense to people out there. I feel you. Ja I feels? Feel you. Ja feels. Yeah, man. All you right. Know, you know the deal. <laughs> Gary, it's time for This Week in Gaming, brought to you by Gatorade. I know you love it, Gary, and we're not really sponsored yeah, by Gatorade, man. just to put that out there. What do we got this week? Well... Uh, the first game, actually, you'll be familiar with because we talked about this game uh, previously, <laughs> is L.A. Noir. Is it L.A. Noir? I, I can never LA get this Noir. damn name pronounced. Because there's a pronunciation in French that's different because it's French, obviously. It's different. But that's L.A. Noir was released name. on. Yeah, there you go. All right. L.A. Noir was released on <laughs> Xbox 360 and PS3 back in 2011. Adam, I know you're familiar with this game because you said that it was. Relatively disappointing to you, actually. Yeah, it was rel- relatively disappointing, and I consider it kind of overrated, in my opinion. Yeah. I mentioned that in the previous uh, episode. I forget which one. Just look for overrated un- overrated games. Um, 
I don't know. I just didn't think this game didn't quite hook me. It didn't feel right, um, especially driving aspect throughout. I know Rockstar always does great things, but it felt like the driving just didn't click with me. I didn't. I didn't like the characters that uh, the the main character. I didn't really connect with him at all. Um, I felt like the aspect of discovering like detective clues that wasn't intuitive enough, um, and going off like facial cues of when you're in a. Like you're interviewing somebody or you're accusing them or inter- interrogating them just doesn't quite correspond to what it should be, in my opinion. Maybe I just suck at that game and some people were a lot better at it and maybe that affects my views. But uh, for me personally, with like my OCD-ness and wanting to get the bad guy, knowing that you could you wrongly could accuse somebody really annoyed the shit out of me and I did not want to F it up. I am... Um... I also have to say, isn't it kind of hard to go off facial cues in a video game? Especially back in 2011, I feel like yeah. some, sometimes the facial expressions in video games aren't really... You really can't read much off them, because some of the, some games do yeah. a really good job with it, like Naughty Dog, for example, and then there's other games that like their faces are more stiff. So mm. it's kind of hard to, speaking, to read that, I feel like. Speaking of facial animations, if you've seen uh, Injustice 2, like there's a gif going around about the, how great their facial animations is. And it's actually pretty solid, uh, what yeah. they're showing off. Um, it, it, I guess go goes to show you how far video games have come. Yay! Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. the next game, Gary? Well, uh, the next one is SimCity 3000. was released on Windows. Now, granted, it was in Canada, this release. Mm. Um, but it was released in 2000. So I, I had to put this game in here because I have had so many experiences with this game growing up. Um, it was actually my introduction, my first real introduction to the SimCity franchise. And, you know, playing on, this is back when I actually had a PC that could run decent video games. Uh, but I just remember hours on end just sitting there and just building cities and just watching everything grow and watching like you know you build these residential areas and they grow up over time and you know like little houses become these gigantic apartment complexes and i don't know i just really love like sim city like um those kind of games where you can build stuff like that like kind of like civilization as well so i I had to put this game in here because it was just um it was just awesome i don't know i just funny enough this was my actually my first sim city game (laughs) yeah this game specifically it was so good. I um, actually, I think I had the game I had was uh, SimCity Three Thousand Unlimited. I think uh, it was slightly different, but yeah. I don't remember the differences because I was kind of young. I I remember specifically because I was young, so I didn't quite understand everything behind this game, uh, like building a city. I kind of just wanted to put as many skyscrapers in there. And me being as young <laughs> as I was, what when this came out, what was I be seven or eight? Uh, I didn't quite understand that you had to like accrue certain things before you could build multiple more things i just wanted to build 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 um later down the road i uh, sort of understood that more and was able to build these cities um and specifically i like the fact that in some of the sim city i'm not i'm not sure if it was in this one i'm sure uh maybe it was is where you can uh you know get a natural disaster and try to rebuild your yeah. city and you know build it back stronger uh you can have like monsters come in and attack the city which is crazy but ufos yeah i remember that uh which was which was kind of cool yeah had some fun this to a uh, uh, building uh you know building game it's actually kind of funny because with this game it wasn't until like five years after i got the game that i really understood how to play it because like he said we were so young at the time so like you know setting certain tax levels and making sure your 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 finances are right that's something that didn't really occur to me yeah. when i was like eight years old i'm just like oh let me put the empire state building right in the middle next to this school for some <laughs> reason so uh. you know it was just really stupid stuff like that, but a great game. It was still fun. I, I miss playing. Yeah, yeah. I, I miss I miss playing these games. I need a I need a good PC. Damn what, it! What's the anyway, final game, Gary? The last game is Diablo three mm, released mm, on mm. Windows back in 2012. Yeah. Now I actually have no experience with this game. My brother in law is huge into this game, diehard fan. I um I, so I don't really have much to say on it, but I wanted to throw it in there as a shout out to Gavin. Um, what do you guys say, Adam? I do have because I did play Diablo th- Diablo three. This was my first introduction to the Diablo series, and I really did enjoy it. isometric. You know, uh, kind of going through dungeons and collecting loot and making your character better. Uh, Rock the Demon Hunter. Um, I know a lot of people had issues with the original, uh, which which with the original Diablo three, but then they came out with like an expansion, uh, Reaper of Souls, which apparently everybody loves, and it's on PS four. Which I've always wanted to kind of go back and check it out to see what they did and uh, make it, made better. Um, I really did. I do remember playing with um, 
some of my friends back in the day co-op aspect behind it which was a lot of fun uh going through dungeons together and uh taking down like the gigantic bosses it was a lot of good it was a very good time uh and you know playing different characters leveling them up it it, it was really cool honestly cool groovy yeah i'll have to uh maybe get into diablo at some point i don't know maybe during this gaming drought i'll Maybe I'll get that game. Well, actually, I don't have a PC, so I can't. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, anyway, Adam, uh, when, when we take when us we away. become What's huge, up? we can get we can get two gigantic rigs for each of us, and oh, then we can play, stream, amazing. you know, be buddy buddies. That'd be so much fun. It needs to happen. It's got to happen. Yeah. So we anyway, count on you. Out that there. is it. That is it for this week in gaming. Brought Adam, to you by Moby Games. Games. Yes. Thank you for the shout out. No there problem. We go. Uh, can't forget that because they do the work for us and we just read off of it and we won't get sued because Gary's a slacker <laughs> <laughs> just kidding uh, that'd be a pain in the ass to go through but now it's time for all you know the news has been going on since the past week and what we've got so far uh, recently what came out is that Ubisoft confirmed uh, four of its big AAA franchises are all coming in the next 12 months so should all of these games should be coming out all well these original four should be coming out before march uh march 2018 uh starting off is far cry 5 which we talked about last week with the rumors of it being uh kind of unsubstantiated rumors of it being a wild west setting but it is set in montana Again, I don't know how they would do this in real time, uh, if it was more modern, or uh, like the way the past Far Cries have been, you use more modern weapons and everything, or is it going to go farther back? Uh, it'll be fascinating to see what they go in that route. Do uh, you have any more thoughts on Far Cry in itself? Um, I'm actually, just read off the rest of the games, I'll, I'll like withhold my uh, my opinions until, until the I... End? Yeah, yeah okay. let's do that. Uh, the next one is The Crew 2, which kind of shocked me when I heard them uh, announce this, specifically from the fact that I didn't know The Crew did that well. I know there was a lot of hype going into it. It was a, a kind of like an MMO, but for car racing, uh, you could drive cross-country. It, it was like a whole map of the U.S., kind of like shrunkated, uh, truncated. Um, but apparently, uh, it like shipped... It says, I found like a Wikipedia, the crew shipped 2 million copies as of January 1st, 2015. I'm not entirely sure when it was released, if it was released in 2013 or 2014. Gary, look for that up for me real quick while I read off the next one. Then you have, uh, the next one is a new Assassin's Creed game, which was confirmed that it's going to be a crash, Assassin's Creed Origins, and it's supposed to be set in Egypt, and last week, episode 37, we went through the fact that it's trying to have a Skyrim-sized, uh, um you know map and i think gary found it what was it 2014 yeah december 2nd 2014 and so it sold two million co- the crew two or crew sold two million copies in one year which is solid and i mean it makes sense that they're doing a, a sequel to that and then now a long-awaited uh south park the fractured butthole <laughs> <laughs> will uh jason schreier of Kotaku uh has uh quote following a lengthy delay the next south park game will be out on october 17th 2017 so we'll see south park at e3 it seems like i'm gonna guess now i'll see it uh, i'll believe it when i actually see it because it was supposed to come out last year or january it was pushed back and now it's pushed back completely to october so i'll believe it when it actually happens i'm really excited for this game the stick of truth is really good fun fact if you want to i think you can go out and uh, pre-order this game on ps4 i'm not sure maybe on xbox and pc uh but actually if you pre-order this game you get the original stick of truth for free so yeah Go, go pre-order the game if you want to play the original Stick of Truth, which is a fantastic game. Uh, it's hilarious. And also there's um, apparently going to be – it's not going to be uh, – they didn't really announce this, but it's also uh, – they have additional – they're going to be a new IP in the works. So I'm curious if they're actually going to be talking about this at E3. Um, that's the main things that I pulled out from uh, all Ubisoft had been talking about. Uh, yeah. So Gary, give me your spiel of what you got after all of this. All right, so well, basically, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, re- I'm really excited about the news and everything. Uh, I mean, I'm really excited to see what they do with Far Cry. Uh, I've always really enjoyed the series. I thought that even though like the fourth game, I don't know about you, Adam, but I thought it was kind of like it was kind of disappointing because I thought that the villain was really weak in that game. Like, yeah, I mean, he was cool, but like I couldn't hate him. So therefore, like, you just I-, I wasn't as driven to like basically kill him as I normally would be, like in Far Cry 3, where you hated Voss, you hated Pagan, or no, what the hell is that guy's name? 
I was going to say Pagan Mim, but that was Far Cry Steve. 4. Steve. Steve. Let's go with Steve. Yeah, sure. That seems like a generic <laughs> yeah. name. Uh, <laughs> that's, a gen- that's a normal villain name. Yes, I hate Steve. Yeah, anyway, fuck Steve. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I really I really enjoy the Far Cry series. Now I'm really excited to uh, finally get my hands on the next entry uh, into that. And I, I, I mean, I kind of hope it's a Wild West setting, even though that really isn't, uh, you know, actually set in stone yet but it'd be really cool to see what they did with that sort of thing so uh, i'm really excited about that i, I really want to see what they also do with uh, assassin's creed i'm kind of cautious about that given the fact that you know the last few games have been kind of mediocre i did like black flag though um so i want to kind of be cautious with, cautious with assassin's creed and kind of see where that goes and then i've actually never played the crew i mean i i know people that have bought that game and they they enjoyed it but i also saw that the reviews were kind of mediocre mm-hmm. so i don't know what uh i mean i i think you've played right you've played that game no i never it didn't really uh i was interested in it uh kind of like a car mmo but i mean after the reviews came out and it sounded like it was mediocre i was like i don't feel like dropping 60 bucks on this game if it's just so so yeah fair enough yeah I, I actually i'm not really big into racing games as it is but uh I, that does kind of sound interesting, though. If they could pull it off properly, I would probably consider getting that game. So, I mean, that's basically it, though. I, I, I'm not really big into South Park, believe it or not. I really have never really watched that show that much, so I can't Same, really say I'm going to go out and buy the game. I didn't watch it that much, but I still love the Stick of Truth. Yeah, I would yeah. highly, would, <laughs> highly recommend anybody out there go. If you're going to get the Stick of Truth for free, go pre-order this game. Play the Stick of Truth. It's fucking fantastic. I'm looking at you, Gary. I. <laughs> buy it or get it i mean the show is funny i will give it that but i just it's not something that i i want to like take time out of my day to watch i don't know it's just fun this things, is but... like the sick of truth was one of those generally funny games i haven't there's not many video games that genuinely make me laugh this is one of them you should go get yeah. it yeah we've actually uh, it's funny because this game has been delayed so long that we've actually had this exact conversation about <laughs> three different times during the podcast <laughs> it's so it's true fascinating. though it is so true. That's like leads me to my point of I'll believe it when I see it. Seriously, like episode probably like episode ten, we were I'm, talking about this. I'm <laughs> sure it was because back in December or November they said they were going to delay it. So that's probably uh, it's probably like episode thirteen or something. Yeah, honestly. somebody go check that out. Fact check us. Uh, is that all you got, Gary? So I can yeah, move that's on. it. Pretty much it. I just. Uh, I need more games, damn it. It can't come fast. Like Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed, they really can't come fast enough. So, Moving on. The Nintendo Switch is apparently the best-selling console in the U.S. for the second month. Tom Phillips over at Eurogamer writes, The numbers are in, and the Nintendo Switch was April's best-selling games console in the U.S. It's the second month running, which Nintendo has taken the country's sales crown. More than 280. 80,000 Switch consoles were sold during the month along with another 69, oh yeah, 69k units of the 3DS. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold 460,000 physical units in just two days. Uh, which is kind of uh, crazy. Uh, factoring digital sales, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe actually sold more than 550000 in total. This is honestly a great sign for Nintendo. It's starting off strong. Seems like people are interested in it. Uh, it's not a Fisher Price toy. It's uh, they, It seems like they're <laughs> treating gamers like gamers. Right now, anyway. Uh, I, already, I think I mentioned it last week, how it does frustrate me. It seems like certain sites are like highlighting like the one game that's fine that's coming to the nintendo switch and it's kind of shedding more light on it than like other consoles and i feel like that's just favoritism uh, i'm not saying it actually is but it seems like from the outside in it's like favoritism oh look this one game because there's a drought of games is coming to the nintendo switch everybody flock like sheep and go to it yeah I, I feel like a lot of people just really want nintendo to be like this awesome i think everybody know, at least a switch to be this awesome thing and I think yeah, a lot of people do want it because Nintendo, a thriving Nintendo, is uh, is good for I think the the gaming comp- or gaming industry just because they'll they'll push the envelope. They'll do different things when it comes to developing games and different things in their genre or in their uh, franchises. What do you what you what what do you want, Gary? Yeah, I was going to say it's interesting with the sales and everything. I feel like these numbers are only going to get better, uh, crazy enough, because I feel like they're. They're doing an interesting thing where they release like I feel like they're releasing games like really major games like at a I don't know like at a 
at an interesting rate. So it kind of keeps their sales going. Because I, it's funny because like I talked to, um, I was talking to one of my friends at work yeah. the other day, and he was saying how he was thinking about getting a Switch, and I was like, oh, what? Mm -hmm. You're gonna, you're basically, you're gonna buy the Switch and then what? Five games? And he's like, I know, it doesn't have a lot of games, but it has Zelda, and I really want to play that game. So it's like, I, I wonder if that's like a, the general opinion of a lot of people. Like they're really. They're really, you know, excited about Zelda or like Mario Kart, and that's like enough for them to buy the console. I think it's it's it is interesting because back when the Wii U came out, uh, <laughs> did you hold off a sneeze there, Gary? <laughs> well, no, I uh, I'm still recovering from my cold, and I didn't want, I had to cough real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's interesting that it goes to show you that if uh, Nintendo puts out a solid piece of hardware, that people will buy the games for it. Um, the issue with the Wii U is no one wanted to buy. Uh, be frank, that piece of shit uh, console. <laughs> just because, Damn. Uh, uh, I mean, really, let's be honest. It wasn't that great of a console. Uh, I mean, no one flocked to it. No one was interested in this uh, this console. But now you put out a solid piece of hardware that people like are interested in. They will flock to it for these games like Zelda and Mario Kart Eight. That these. These games then become system sellers, unlike the Wii U, where they were always talking about, oh, will Smash finally be the system seller that the Wii U needs? Or will this next Zelda game be the system seller? Or will Mario Kart 8 be the system seller? Well, the fact is, games can't be, can't push the system. The games can't sell the console, uh, for you. The console itself needs to sell, uh, sell itself. And the fact that you're, uh, bringing in these larger titles, you know, gives people credence to go out and buy the console itself because that's something they're more interested in than like the Wii U was. The Switch is actually seems like it's, it seems like a solid console or a hybrid console, if that makes any sense. It does. Yeah, I I really like. I don't know. If I had the cash, I would probably run out and buy it. It's just I, I want Me to too. see like what else. I want to actually. I really do want to see what they do. What other games come to it eventually? Like besides Mario Kart, for example. It's yeah. not something I'm particular like i'm really interested in so i don't know i it'll be it's on the radar it'll be interesting to see how third parties react to this and if they bring yeah. the, the console or the games to their console it'll be fascinating to see how fifa does because it's not actually i don't think it's an actual generic fifa title i don't think it's gonna be like fifa 18 i think it's just gonna be fifa so it's gonna be interesting uh to see how that works well, what's funny is <laughs> you're mentioning sports games my friend that I was talking to about buying the Switch, he was like, "Dude, he's like, imagine if NHL 17 come or like NHL games come to come to the console. He's like, I, I can bring this to work and play like when we're like basically when we're dead, which is often." Um, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's that's the spirit." There we go. <laughs> but yeah, so hardworking millennials we got here. Uh, you gotta love it. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> but that aspect of the console itself, like that idea that you can go on the road and play, like more. Uh, you know, solid games like that, though, does pique people's interest. It piques mine too. Yeah. Like playing Mario Kart Eight on the go or on like a plane ride, like with solid graphics, does pique my interest. But you know, we'll see how it continues. Moving on, The Witcher is getting a Netflix series, which was very fascinating. Brian Ashcraft over at Kotaku writes, The Witcher series is being turned into an English language Netflix drama by CG visual effects company Platigue Image SA. The Witcher series was spawned by Pol Polish novelist Andrzej Spakowski and has spawned highly successful and wonderful video games. Quote, I'm thrilled that Netflix will be doing an adaptation of my story, staying true to the source material and the themes that I've spent over 30 years writing. Uh, end quote says Spaskovi. Uh, Sapkowski, Sapkowski, that's better, <laughs> who will serve as a creative consultant in an official release. Quote, I'm excited about our efforts together as well as the team assembled to shepherd these characters to life. End quote. The show will be executive produced by Sean uh, Daniel, who's, you know, known from the Mummy franchise, and Jason Brown, The Expanse. Never heard of that. The Oscar-nominated visual effects studio Platigue Image SA is doing the show, but the official release doesn't specifically state if it's CG animated or a live action, or a mix of the two. Uh, no stills have been released yet either. Um, so that is uh, kind of interesting, because it... The fact that I feel like this is definitely going to succeed because it originally was a, a book. Um, but it also leads me to the fact that uh, I had an original – I had a thought today is that I feel like video games aren't meant for the 
the movie screen per se yeah, i don't think i agree i don't think right now because i don't think uh movie directors hollywood directors understand how to adapt adaptate video games to the movie screen i feel like netflix and tv shows are the best right now adaptations of uh adapting a video game genre or uh you know books i guess you could say but i mean Hollywood does pretty well with books right now, but right now TV I feel like is the avenue for video games because uh, video games are long and you can expand the story. You can talk about individual parts in TV series, especially in Netflix uh, shows. Um, so I, I'm interested to see how this uh, goes. But I did have another point, but I want you to go first, Gary. Sure. Um, no, I think The Witcher will do really well actually in a TV show, which is it's like you said, it, it started with a book, so. I feel like it's easier for a lot of people to make a book into a into a TV show. Like, look at Game of Thrones, for example. Um, but I guess it's interesting because usually I'm pretty skeptical about video games going to like a, the big screen because like, you've seen it before with like Halo and they they try to make that or they made a movie. I guess it was a movie, right? It wasn't a TV show, uh, TV series, right? That movie never happened with Peter Jackson or Steven Spielberg. Oh, the oh, the, oh, the, oh, the movie never actually released. Nope, never happened. <laughs> There's oh, shit. Keep, all right. They keep talking about so it. It keeps you know fluctuating. Same with like the Uncharted movies and all that. And, and see, that's the thing. It's like I, I've, I've said this in the past. I don't know how. It's got to be so hard to try to make a video game into a TV series because uh, sometimes a lot. Of, uh, the big part about a video game is the fun you have playing it. You know? Yeah. And how do you create the value for people to go out and it, like? How do you create that value for people to come out and see that movie and, and enjoy it just as much as playing it? You know, like Uncharted. Exactly. A lot of the fun you have is like scaling crazy, like you know, crazy skyscrapers and cliffs. But like in the movie, you're watching that happen. So, you know, it just um, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it's got to be real, really hard to do as a producer. I don't know if they're gonna be following the story of Geralt. It'll be interesting if they they actually go that route. Uh, I'm not sure if yeah. all the books follow him or if it's just like a kind of telling stories in that world per se. Um, I'm kind of a Witcher lore noob, so don't look at me but it'll be fascinating if seeing this show actually get, makes me more fascinated in the world itself and makes me want to come back to the witcher 3 it also makes me think that i i feel like the best way for hollywood or uh these like netflix or something to adapt a video game is not specifically to take the video game itself and paste it onto you know the the screen or like the movie screen i feel like the best way is to take the world of the video game take the world that we know like for example i feel like mass effect would be fantastic as a tv show i feel like that world uh the way it's built it's kind of star trekky mixed with like star wars it definitely could be yeah like the tech weapons and like the force powers kind of um i feel like the worlds that these video games build is definitely an avenue for these TV shows to go into where they can they can drop like Easter eggs or little little th- breadcrumbs, you know, mentioning uh, things that happened in this world from like, characters you've played in the video game, but not specifically following that spe- that character, you know? Absolutely, and like, can you imagine having a Mass Effect show that runs like I don't know how many, like five years, for example, and you're like, I mean. I know how you were just saying, don't just copy and paste a video game into a TV series, but I'm going to do that right now, actually. <laughs> but like, can, you imagine, can you imagine like having a Mass Effect TV show where it, you, know, you span like five years and you work your way up to that final battle with the Reapers where you have like that final showdown in like, the last few episodes? That'd be insane. Yeah, That'd be so awesome. I feel like now that you mentioned it, Mass Effect is a solid franchise to actually copy and paste because there's a lot of branching things that you can have with Mass Effect and commander shepherd it's not like everybody had a different experience when they played the these three games it's not one yeah. singular experience and having like uh showing that on the tv screen would be amazing like especially at like the, the end of mass effect 2 spoiler alerts when you go what is it through the rift and you have to try to survive and oh you my know, god get yeah, all dude, your, the whole get your team oh my back that makes it dramatic uh there like it's Oh man! So the suicide mission, essentially, you go on that suicide mission to to, to finally beat the collectors, and it's, that would be so sick. Like you, if, a certain death, and they come out alive. Of course they would, because it's a TV show. But it'd be so sick, so yeah. amazing. But I mean, if it was a Netflix show, Netflix is not afraid of killing off characters in certain shows. And I feel like if it's right to tell the story that way, you can you can you know cut off somebody. Like uh, imagine how crazy that'd be if they cut off a beloved video game character that actually continues in the video game. I mean. It, it, yeah. You know, it, they've done that in like Daredevil before, um, so I wouldn't be surprised. You know, for 
you know, storytelling. But uh, other than that, moving on, in correspondence with the Witcher game, apparently Gwent, the Witcher card game, enters open beta this uh, next week. Tom Phillips over uh, Eurogamer writes, Gwent, the Witcher game, will open will enter open beta on 24th, or May 24th on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. The collectible card Battler has been available in closed beta for a while. Sadly, if you've been playing so far, your pro- progress is about to be reset. Both card collections and player progress will need to be started over from scratch, and the closed beta period will end two days beforehand on the May, May 22nd, so that servers can be wiped clean and prepped for the game's fresh start. Now, Gary, I feel like we're both in core... Uh, you know, agreements of this where we, Witcher 3 wasn't a huge game uh, that we kind of fell in love with. I mean, we understand the scope and the uh, the brilliance of the game itself, but we never clicked with it. And for me personally, uh, Gwent as a card game never clicked with me. I didn't understand why people enjoyed that game. Uh, I know a lot of people did enjoy Gwent while playing it. Me personally, I didn't understand it. Uh, I don't know. Gary, did you feel the same way or did you actually enjoy it? I... I've always, um, I've never really enjoyed these little side games and video games personally. I know, uh, I didn't really like Gwen. I didn't like Pazak either in KOTOR. Another reference. Thank you. Always. Gotta throw it in there every episode, baby. I'm gonna get that game in here. <laughs> it's like subliminal, I'm telling uh... you. Um, but yeah, I never really liked the uh, the side games. I don't know. It's just me, but I know a lot of people that did like Gwen. Um, I have two friends, um, Matt Peters, who actually listens to uh, this podcast quite often. What's up, Matt? And also, Go give us a rating <laughs> on iTunes, you motherfucker! <laughs> and I also have Gavin that uh, really loved Witcher as well. Really liked that game. Gavin, um, and they really enjoyed playing iTunes, you motherfucker! <laughs> Sorry, Gary, I just had to. I don't. I think he has an Android phone. So Stitcher, something yeah, like that. Something. But um, but yeah, he uh, they both really enjoyed those car games. So I mean, I feel like. With way the with how is with how popular the Witcher game was, and making this card game its own game, I think it's going to do really well personally because I think there's just so many people that love that game, love that card game, and I think they're really going to gravitate towards this. It's like a dream come true for a lot of people. So I couldn't have said it yeah, better not myself. for me. Yeah, not for me, but for a lot of other people. I'm just a loser, apparently. <laughs> You're not a loser, Gary. <laughs> You're my best friend. Which corresponds oh, you to being a loser. Moving on! RuneScape, <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> RuneScape maker Jaeger? How do you say? Jagex? Jagex. Uh, J- Jagex. Jagex. And Improbable partner to create massive open world games, according to Dean Takahashi over at VentureBeat. Just a few days ago, after raising $520 million from SoftBank, Improbable has announced an alliance to develop big online game worlds with Jagex, the maker of the fantasy role-playing online game RuneScape. Yet Jagex will use Improbable's spatial o- OS, an operating system built for the era of cloud computing and big data for future development projects. London-based Improbable has stirred a lot of conversation about technology and open world since the news of SoftBank. Improbable spatial OS technology is a computation platform that allows developers to build virtual worlds that offer permanent, persistent, and engaging experience. Quote, JX has already built, made RuneScape an iconic brand in online gaming, and it's great to be partnering with them to bring new levels of depth and scale to JX Futures creations by providing Spatial OS as a platform. End quote, said Herman Nurella, Improbable's co-founder and CEO, in a statement, quote, From catching the first fish on Tutorial Island in 2001 to hunting for loot in the wilderness, RuneScape and the world of Jelenor have given millions of players great stories to tell. We're excited to see what such an experience with this established and well-loved IP will be able to do with our platform, which enables greater player density, larger and more detailed worlds, and new forms of engagement, end quote. Uh, they go on to say that did not, they don't, I don't think they mentioned what games they're going to go to, but Gary, I know you're a huge fan of RuneScape, so I kind of want to get your opinions yeah. on this. You know, it's funny, Um, I, I love this game, and it's as soon as I saw RuneScape mentioned in this Google Docs, I was like, damn, I really should go back and start playing again. <laughs> um, the game, I don't know, I love like the way that game, I know how like a lot of times in MMOs you can kind of like live an alternate life, and that game was like just that i don't know i just i love like there's something about just sitting there chilling out and just grinding away like chopping down trees yep. for like a few hours it's the craziest thing i don't know it's like therapeutic but um i'm interested to see what jagex is able to do i mean net with this new partnership like i mean what else they bring to the table in the future because obviously runescape's gonna have to evolve more i mean it has over time like if you 
were to go back to RuneScape now, the current version of the game, you wouldn't recognize it anymore, um, especially if you've been out of it for a few years. I know I play... Um, the, the thing I love about Jagex is that they've actually allowed like older players to play their versions of the game. So they have like old school RuneScape, really? which is from like the early 2000s. That's yeah. cool. Old, um, or they have RuneScape Classic, which is like the early 2000s. Old school RuneScape 2007, which is for like basically me and you, Adam. Mm. And then they have obviously the current version of the game. So... I mean, I, I mean, I'm interested Gary, to see what they. There's a game for you to play. You just need a web browser. There you go. I, I know. I do. I, do I get back into old school RuneScape? I think I may. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm just gonna. I, I think that it's gonna be interesting to see if they maybe evolve RuneScape more uh, going forward, or if they create something completely different, like a new massive open world game. And I'm I'm really interested to see what they do with that because I think they do a great job, uh, great work. And honestly, RuneScape. It has to be like one of the most successful games of all time. It has to be, at least in the MMO genre, because it's been running since like what two thousand. I mean, mm. it's like seventeen years, and it's basically the same game with just like incremental same, changes every time. Same length as uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah. Did, did RuneScape mean, ever have like expansions per se, or was it just like the same game and they added on things? I think it was added on. Like, I mean, the thing is, like, you had to be a member to get all those features. So that you buy the membership, and then you eventually have like. They would add in different skills that you could uh, level up and then different storylines, different game modes and stuff like that. So it wasn't really expansions, but just updates over gotcha. the years. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Moving on. <sighs> Hearthstone's next update is about keeping 70 million players happy. Mike Minotti over Adventure Beat writes... Sharing and playing Hearthstone with your friends is about to get easier and more rewarding, and Blizzard is hoping you appreciate it so much so that you'll keep logging to play every day. The studio announced two big features coming to Hearthstone. It's digital card be- game Behemoth for PC and mobile in the coming weeks. Friendly Challenge will let players complete their daily quest while com- competing against people on their friends list. Ooh, sorry, I had to burp. Blizzard is also finally making it easier to share decks with friends. You can now copy a code inside the game that will let you share your deck with anyone. And if you have a code, copy yourself. Hearthstone will know and ask if you want to import it. Not only are these big quality life updates for free-to-play game, but they go a long way towards pleasing a player base that always feels like it's on the verge of revolt. Fans have actually celebrated the latest expansion, Jury to Ungoro, for creating a competitive environment where many deck types are viable. I sort of disagree with that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that just goes into slightly what the two things that they are adding to the game. I feel like they're much needed, um, allowing you to, you know, share decks with your friends and, you know... Do, complete daily quests that you don't want to actually do in ladder or arena um, to finally get them out of the way so you can gain more gold. I feel like there's multiple, still a lot of issues with Hearthstone itself, um, like the the cost to get into the game now, where a lot of people, I feel like, I think there was a survey created by one of the YouTubers of Hearthstone where uh, the latest heroic tavern brawl, they asked like if they were, they just totally ignored it or they thought it was cool and most of the people, like 60% of people ignored it just because it had a large like gold price to get into the game or get into the tavern brawl itself and play it um, and it seems like there's there's a lot of issues they need to fix like RNG um, a, lot, a lot of people out there do have good ideas uh, when I look at the, like the comments section which I feel like Blizzard needs to listen to um, because the, the, the one video I saw they make mention that the fact that RNG in this game unfortunately runs a little too rampant where most of the time you remember RNG as being a bad thing instead of a good thing because for every time a RNG happens well for you um RNG screws you over the other 9 times uh, and, and yeah <laughs> so it it just goes to show that there there's a lot of things you they need to fix um like but I don't want to go into all of them because we don't have a long enough show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I still play because I still enjoy it. But I, I, I'm on the lower levels where it's kind of fun just to dick around and make different uh, uh, decks just for fun. Uh, but moving on, this is what I, I kind of find fascinating is that Devolver Digital uh, – will have its first ever press conference. And if you guys didn't know, Devolver Digital is a publisher who specifically published uh, indie games. Uh, they sort of came on the scene like Serious Sam, and then they the big breakout, I think, was Hotline Miami. So uh, 
the most notable games is that hotline you have hotline miami one and two ali ali one and two the talus principle titan souls pro force and enter the gungeon along with plenty of others they published and i found this fascinating because most of the times you see like in the sony press conference where they go to the indie section uh where the devolver digital does come out and they just like they do a montage of all the indie games they're playing and then showcase like one or two um, and it seems like this is going to be interesting now that they had their own press conference where they can show off all the indie games that they are producing. You got something, Gary? Yeah, I was going to say I'm not really too familiar with uh, the studio, but I, I, I have heard of Hotline Miami. I remember. I think I'm not sure if you've played it, but I remember you mentioning it. Oh, mentioning played, it. In I the played past. one and two. Solid game. Okay. Very good game. Yeah. Fantastic game. The the thing that I really wanted to say is I think it's cool to watch these uh, indie developers grow over time like they become bigger and they can finally start getting their name out there more so like it it's gonna be interesting to see how they work this press conference and see if they can spin it into something to get like more publicity for themselves which they will um but you know i think it's just kind of a cool story you know they came from basically probably a small group of people and now they're building up bottom now we hit sorry just kind of had to that song is kind of sucks but i had to sing it (laughs) hey it's drake (laughs) nothing sucks from drake (laughs) uh but yeah uh, a lot of games in here that I like. Uh, Titan Souls I really enjoy on the Vita. Bro Force, a solid game that was on PS Plus. Uh, I remember playing it. It was really goofy. Um, going through levels, fighting off demons. Uh, first, fighting off like military forces that turned into demons and devils uh, was fantastic. I love the. <laughs> they make like uh, all like the '90s and '80s action heroes are in that. Like you have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, kind of like as Terminator, uh, you have Sylvester Stallone as like Rambo, and it's, but they they're not actually specifically called like uh you know Rambo, they're called like Rambro, like B R O, <laughs> Terminbro or Broinator, I think that's what it's called. There's a lot of uh things. I think Gary's taking a picture of me right now, which is throwing me off. It's making me a little scared. For Twitter, for <laughs> Twitter, you'll be saying it. You're well, doing it now saying- while we're recording. <laughs> Yeah, straight I am. It's got to be a candid pick. You can't know it's cut. Co- well, you knew it's coming, but whatever. Yeah, because I can see you, Gary. It makes it obvious. When you hold the <laughs> phone up, up in front of the camera, <laughs> it makes it really obvious. <laughs> uh, I was hoping I could sneak it past you, but you're too sharp. Too, sharp, too sharp for me. <laughs> you can still take a picture of me. Get Just get my good <laughs> side, which is all of it. Moving on uh, over at Game Informer, Joe Jubia writes, uh... Sega plans to revive an old French uh, revive old franchises. A lot of old franchises, according to this. The game industry has changed a lot since Sega was a household name, but the company may be tapping into its glory days by bringing back series that earned it acclaim over the years. On page 22 of Sega's latest business report for the end of the fiscal year, the company references, quote, revival of past IPs, end quote, as part of its strategy through the year 2020. This could include any number of franchises from the company's history, including beloved names like Fantasy Star and Shining Force. Another potential revival is Obsidian's cult hit, Alpha Protocol. There you go, Gary. A modern-day espionage RPG. RPG. While it's uh, far away, f- uh, far from confirmed, developer at least publicly acknowledged the possibility of Twitter. Uh, it sort of, you know, Obsidian did very, you know, vague quote. Uh, the effort could also include titles under the Atlas label, a subsidiary of Sega, which might include dormant franchises like Trauma Center or follow-ups to one-off titles like Radiant Historia. At this point, any possible return for any of these titles is pure speculations. Uh, we should wait for an official release. But Gary, would you get excited for... I know you mentioned Alpha Pro- Protocol for a, a game you were disappointed in. Would you get excited yeah. if they released a second one, another crack at it? I would be excited. I... The thing about Alpha Protocol was that I enjoyed the game for the most part, but then I got to a boss fight that was impossible to were, to were, to were, to were, um, a certain character build. Now, I discussed that more in depth in the actual episode that we did, which was uh, but the games that disappointed us most. Um, but I would be excited for an Alpha Protocol, too, because I, 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 like I like Obsidian. I think they do good work, even though some of their games are notorious for being buggy, fortunately. Um, but I would be excited to see what they can do with a you know a, sec- a sequel to that game hopefully i actually kind of hope it's a standalone game like they make a second game that's completely separate from the first um but yeah i, I would like to see what they um what they can bring back maybe make a code tour three of maybe course. of course but that's but of course i think was it um i'm not even sure what company it is anymore that owns the rights to that game is it bioware i don't think it is i don't know who it is i'm sure it's, it's doesn't it's exist it's a star wars game so i'm assuming ea owns it 
That's probably true. Yeah. yeah. Damn them. But I mean, EA owns Bioware, so. Yeah. Nah. Uh, <laughs> we'll yeah, see. Whatever. Yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring on more games. Revive everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, moving on to the final article we have so far. Apparently, there's a report, according to Game Forever, that Nintendo is planning on bringing Zelda to the smartphones. Now. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this. I don't know how they're going to bring Zelda to the smartphones. I don't know if it's going to be like top-down, like dungeon-crawling type deals. I know Gary's not too fan of mobile. I mean, neither am I. But it kind of made me think of like what franchises or video game franchises would be interested on... It would be kind of cool on a mobile you know, platform. Sorry, I burped again. Well, mobile platform, I mean, you have to think about, you know, making it short and sweet, uh, you know, not doing super in-depth mobile games because people don't go and sit on the toilet, like, for 15 hours trying to play this one game. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They would get hemorrhoids, man, if they did that. (laughs) But, like, I mean, honestly, the thing about this, like, mobile game thing, like, I, I... I feel like the only games that can really succeed on there are like just like you said, simple games. Like if they did like Mario Kart, that'd be something simple. You know, it's just like straightforward. It's a racing game. But you can't. It's not you, like here's the thing with mobile games: you can't do anything that you need to tightly control. That's the issue. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that's the thing. It's I, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of mobile games at all. Like I've I've played them. Don't get me wrong. I played like some. Uh, what the hell was it called? I don't even know. It's like some sort of Star Wars game where you build a base. It's like a ripoff of another game. You build your base up and you fight other people, defend your base and stuff like that. But like, it's never anything that I feel like playing for an extended period of time. And I, I hate when they bring like these, like Zelda, for example, they're going to bring like a big franchise to the mobile scene. How are you going to do that? How are you going to make that worthwhile for people that really enjoy Zelda? Like, I don't know. Cause I don't know either. Is it going to be like, is it going to be like an old school feel where you, like you said, do like a top down thing where it's like, maybe, you know, like, you know, maybe that's how they do it, but I just these mobile games always are like dumbed down, honestly, and it's just never worth the price. Ironically enough, I did think about like this topic or this like what game would be interesting on mobile. So anybody, any developers out there, you can feel free to steal my idea. But uh, I was thinking, kind of ironically enough, like Diablo three. I was thinking, but not in the Diablo three kind of isometric style looking i was also thinking of like final fantasy i was thinking of anything you can actually cr- collect kind of like characters or iconic like different looking characters and my thought process kind of with this game all right now i'm going to go into the development mode right here i was thinking it's kind of a mix of like a dungeon crawler mixed with kind of like you see uh like it's not city building but sort of like city building that you see where you kind of gain resources over time while you're not playing the game. And I kind of had this idea is like, what if you can kind of like a mix between, you know, Poke- not Pokemon Go, but collecting characters, which I think you can do in Fire Emblem's Heroes. I'm on well, the mobile, don't quote me on that, but I feel like that's a thing But from what I've seen. But you can collect different types of heroes, like, like uh, different types of skill sets that they have. Um, you know, collect them. You can go run through dungeons in a specific area. It's kind of like quick, like tap, uh, attack in. It's like sort of kind of autonomous kind of deal where you can add, like, do special attacks. Um, I don't know, something along those lines. And then while you're waiting, you could build up, like, their training center or, like, the town that you're based in, or the castle you're based in, like, building up, like, training sequences where you have these characters specifically go train over time. So, like, you can go train them, and, like, for hours they'll be training, and you come back, and they're leveled up. Um, and you could go take and do different. Well, that's kind of the idea that I had, which I thought was kind of cool. I like that idea, but I think it adds to the like. I just had this thought before you started talking that whenever you bring these types of games to like, if you were going to do like a Final Fantasy or Diablo, you have to change the game substantially. Yeah. I feel like you have to change like how the core game works. Like, you can have like a game on the mobile phone that re- or mobile foam, um, mobile phone <laughs> that resembles Final Fantasy, but it has to be something like kind of completely different from what you're used to. So it's I feel like it's so hard to capture the same. Like, it might be a great game on console, but it's so hard to bring a great game to a mobile phone because you have to change so much, with, you know, and basically how it works. And I, I, I'm and always skeptical of it. And fan bases don't really, in mobile market, don't really stick long enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, al- it's always like, a, it's like Pokemon Go. It's a buzz thing. Like, oh, yo, you play the Pokemon Go and everybody gets on it and then it's like a few months and then it's kind of I'm just, sure like, people still are playing it, but it's not nearly oh, yeah. as crazy as it was. 
Oh yeah, people breaking into people's homes and shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, what is that? Like, why? <laughs> why is there like a Pokemon in someone's home anyway? Like, come on. God damn it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, but that's uh, it for the articles this week. Uh, Gary, do you have anything that you want to talk about before we go? You know, shoot the shit maybe? Mm-hmm. Anything you're thinking about? Anything you can't really let go? Anything you want to, what have you been well, listening actually, to or reading? Well, actually, I'm going to right now. I actually was really happy with how this episode turned out. Me too. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I have been feeling, so today... Like I said, it was just like this whole day where I feel like my routine was off and I just didn't feel right. I I just drank my first cup of coffee like right before I got on here. That never bodes well. <laughs> um, but damn, dude, I, I don't know. I just felt really good in this episode and I am happy with what we did today. So you know what, everybody? You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> what can I say Sorry. except <laughs> you're welcome? Good movie, Moana. Check it out. Um, Your voice is just amazing. I know. My voice is dynamite <laughs> uh, yeah, see, one day we're gonna have a soundboard where we can play those sound effects dynamite oh so i can't cool. wait i want to have like a, you know a sound effect where it's like the you know just inside jokes that we have like from the mask uh party time B-A-R-T-Y. <laughs> no one laughs except for us here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's great for the fans love it <laughs> it'll basically be all like references to old jim carrey movies because that's all we like would joke about Oh, man. Can you really go wrong, honestly? I need, I need to watch Ace Ventura again. God, those movies. Who wow. they're hilarious. Dude. And you know what's the sad? The sad thing is is that I have Ace Ventura, The Mask, um, and all those movies like on v- VHS still. What the I still fuck have is that? These cassettes. Well, for the young kids out there, <laughs> they're actually tapes, cassettes, if you, if you will. And, uh, yeah, I don't have a VCR anymore, so that's kind of a bitch. So I'm going to have to go out on Amazon and... And buy all those things again. You can so. go. You should go buy like a VHS to convert to DVD, so you just have it for the future. <laughs> well, see, my grandfather does. Um, he has like a VHS converter, but with him, see, with him, he is a genius. I'm going to say it right now. Okay, so the guy is an engineer. Okay, he's developed radio transmitters for people all over the world. I mean, he's a genius. But with him, engineers are geniuses. Comes- let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, you're you're a great guy. Um, whatever, <laughs> whatever it comes to like, <laughs> the thing is, like with him, whenever it comes to doing anything with computers and stuff, he everything is just a step by step process, and it takes forever. And I, I love you, Grandma. I, I love you, Papa. But it's just like, <laughs> oh my God. So I can't do these DVD. I can't convert these tapes to to DVDs because it would take like ten years. I don't know. Th- that reminds me of, like stories where I had to go help my uh, my mom, uh, my grandma when she didn't understand how like the cable box or you know Here. the TV input would work, and she's like, "It just shut off, and it wouldn't turn on." And you just go over and uh, just change the input setting to one, and it was well, like done. <laughs> you know what's so funny is is my grandfather's amazing with computers. Like he he's uh, he's set in me seventy nine soon, and he knows computers like. Any of us do. I mean, he he's always had he had the first iPad, he had the first iPod Touch, Damn. and he's always like your grandpa's he's really up hit. to date with everything. Damn right, dude. And he and he's really into that sort of thing. So it's always been. Um, it's not like he's unfamiliar with it, but yeah, like I said, it's just like everything has a process. Everything has steps. You have to, like when even like when I was younger, turning on the computer was a, was a process. Like I I had to turn on the computer one switch at a time, like this switch first, and then you go second, third, fourth. <laughs> it's just like. When in reality, I could have just mashed everything at one time. And <laughs> fine. But, um, you know, oh, man. Oh, Jesus. But, uh, but yeah. Before we go, I'll talk about what I've been or what I plan on doing. I want to play more Surge, sure. kind of, uh, tonight. Uh, actually, I need to write the – I'll probably be writing the blog post. So it'll probably be quick. Write it down, pen and paper, and then type it up. Uh, because I feel like I write better when I just write it down on pieces of paper and then type it up. That's just how I am. Um, but yeah, I've been actually started listening to a podcast called S Town. Have you heard of that, Gary? I have not. Well, elaborate. It was it's it's made by the people that did uh, produce Serial, that like large podcast about like a, a murder that occurred. Um, and they did they did like a season two about uh bird doll the the what's his full name the guy the soldier that like you know just walked away got captured and oh, everything i know about yeah this purse post um and also by this american life which is another huge podcast um which we're going to be bigger than in the future guaranteed in the next five months <laughs> guaranteed um <laughs> believe me um but no it's like 
I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to say what it's about because originally it sounds like uh, this uh, one of the This American Life reporters comes down because uh, some guy insinuates that in this random uh, shit town, basically, uh, that somebody's like bragging about a murder that they committed, and it's like a rumor all throughout town, and like they investigate it, find out uh, spoilers. Uh, I mean, it's been out for a little while because uh, I'm on like chapter three. They find out that. Uh, and there's supposed to be like 12 chapters, so I have no idea where this is going, which I'm kind of interested in. Um, find out that there's no actual murder. Spoilers! Um, but, and then it like, it leads into another, per- another person's death, though. Like, that happens, like, you kind of know them, so somebody ends up dying, and I'm kind of interested to see how it goes from there. Uh, seems, uh, it seems like it may start ramping up, which I'm kind of excited and, you know, listening to on drives and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was that's... just going to say, uh, if I if I may add something before we, we head out. I don't of course. Know. I, I, I've been feeling really... Uh nostalgic now because of this runescape talk i might be jumping into runescape a little bit this week i'm just saying <laughs> take some pictures and tweet them too yeah there you go honestly but i i don't know i'm looking up on my game wall right now and i'm like trying to figure out something that can like hold me over for a little bit play some stardew There's valley good... again i know that that's been something i've been trying to do too another another game where i can like live a different life and grind away for hours <laughs> um yeah i'm, I'm gonna I don't know. You, want, like, you want me to guess what you're gonna end up playing what Destiny. I would. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I, that let's be real. Be there because like it's just something I. Well, see, I can always hang out with my friends in Destiny. That's, that's the true. thing. It's like always. That's what brings me back to that game. If I didn't have friends, I wouldn't be playing it. So. <laughs> um. Well, actually, that's partially true. But. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me though for this week. I don't know. I mean, I graduate tomorrow, and it's going to be uh tomorrow being Thursday. So I graduated yesterday because you're listening to this on Friday. Um. But yeah, <laughs> that's. Uh, I'm finally getting the hang of that whole thing. Yeah, the days, days of the week, kindergarten. Didn't sound like from that last sentence. It didn't sound like you're getting the hang of it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's starting to click faster now. I start okay. to realize what I'm saying. Gotcha. But I, uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, just want to say thanks for listening to us. Uh, it's been awesome being here again. Uh, I think we're actually going to be doing another Monday episode. It's like the second week in a row. I don't know. I feel like we've always been. Sp- sprinkling in these interviews so mm-hmm. it's gonna be uh, fun to get back here again on monday and get back in the saddle again yeah so. it'd be uh, exciting unless an interview pops up in the meantime if we can schedule one or if somebody yeah. answers us back who knows um but uh yeah again you can follow us on twitter at two jersey kids please if you're a new listener or continue listener please go subscribe to us and rate us it would help us out, it would help us out amazingly if you could rate us on itunes or whatever podcast app service that you use like if you use overcast if you recommend us that'll help uh if you use stitcher you can rate us on like the website i'm not sure if you do it in app uh and there's other rating services that you could use i'm not quite sure though on android um and also yeah you can check out our you know uh website two jerseykids.com where the blog post should be up by now uh i hope so <laughs> that would be bad things if it's not um but yeah, I mean, there's buttons on there where you can subscribe on Android and you know iTunes if you have a if you're on your phone. But yeah, other than that, we appreciate you all. Uh, Gary, you want to say bye? Yeah, adios, everybody. All right, peace. Keep playing those games. We'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, bye.